Welcome back to Alone With You. Let's interface with the AI core and I think we're about to find out that we need to go to Colony B. It's the only place left to go. Looks like I can't put this off any longer. We've done everything else we can and finding that plant in the Acrodomes was a huge win for us. But the escape ship lacks a functioning food processor. I was hoping we wouldn't have to do this, but... Colony B is the last place we can look for one. And without it, you'll starve on the way back home. As much as I don't want to, please just plot a course to Colony B in the shuttle bay and let's get this over with. Based on what little information I was able to receive, the Colony B living spaces became very volatile in their final months. I... I really don't want to go in there, but we need to see if we can get our hands on that food processing unit. Everything we've discovered at the Agrodomes will be in vain if we can't get a working unit installed in the escape ship. So I guess, head inside and I'll guide you from there. You should be in Hall A, south of the Colony B crew quarters. The food processing unit should be in the mess hall. The door should be to your right. Please, Nala, let's just check the mess hall first. If we don't have to go any further, I'd rather not. There's no way it's that easy. It's a ration unit for emergency supplies. It's completely empty. That's a ration unit? Looks like a space coffin. There's an alert on this display that says, please enter room codes and correct sequence. Hmm. I had to figure out which quarters belong to which colonists, I suppose, and enter the room codes here in that order. Gotcha. Posters are made from hand-drawn slogans and images on the backs of readouts and technical blueprints. Their slogans vary, but ask essentially the same question. Where is Pierre Tong? Apparently the director was not popular after the Rift event. Door to the mess hall is locked with a password system. There's an info screen to the left of the door that might help. Do you want to try to enter something? Sure, room 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. Dang it! All right, Hall A. There's a terminal over there that might have info we can use so we can make this quick. Let's check it out. Those beds were constructed with emergency materials and some hasty stitching. With much of the colony damage, crowding must have been a major problem. Judging by the scan, different families and colonists used the beds over time likely in rotation. This is not how people should live. Those hand-drawn signs read, Days since Tong left us, 128. The number has been scratched out and rewritten several times. This terminal contains reports related to the running of the colony after the rift event. Perhaps we can use these to understand the situation at the time. From here you can access personal pro personnel profiles, incident reports, and council projections. Uh, let's look at personnel profiles. Psychological breakdowns of many of the remaining colonists, as reported by head psychologist Serbjit, Serbjit Bouchard. I'll load them up. Communication Specialist Kaylee Pajari. Subject is dealing with breakdown of colony by focusing on her child. 
She maintains a hopeful attitude. I'm probably going to need this information to figure out the rooms, but uh, there's no reason to worry about that yet, I guess. I guess once I see the rooms, I can figure out if I need to kind of go into more depth and come back here. When your partner is available to care for their child, subject uses spare time to exercise. I believe this has been key to her mental well-being. Sanitation supervisor... Okay. Mm. Yeah, so there's not too much reason to read this yet. I'm going to go check out the rooms first. And then come back here and try to match it with what I just read. Projections. Looks like the colonists formed a rotating body to help organize the survivors and introduce some kind of order. Last entry. A uh, second scouting party to Colony A has not returned. Supplies are at their limit, and compromise to Colony B only worsens. With current population, survivability is only a matter of months. Water filters continue to function, but rations are running out. There's an addendum, entered a few days later. The child of Colony B, Crystal Pajari, has sadly succumbed to malnutrition and disease. Even her mother has abandoned hope. Jesus. Uh, let's look at incidents. It appears the colonists formed a crude justice system whereby offenses were judged by peers and recorded. Most recent report reads Technician Rumsey was detained after his third altercation with another colonist. His disruptive behavior is making things difficult. Though his contributions to the overall effort are appreciated, his talent for aggressive intervention is becoming a liability. In such a desperate situation, it must have been difficult to maintain a stable society. Room 2. Room 1. Oh, so I can actually figure out... Yeah, so let's figure out these two rooms right now. So, room one. Who does this belong to? Oh, look at that huge ice cream sandwich. Dozens of dusty textbooks and reference material about human behavior and psycho uh, psychology on that shelf. Okay, so probably the psychologist's quarters. The humans really do like inefficient physical media. Thank you. Synthetic leather couch, it looks very well worn, like many people have sat or reclined upon it. Lavatory sealed shut. A couple of sleeping areas set up for colonists, and the furniture has been moved to accommodate them. Despite the musty layer from being exposed to the damp air, the bed is tidily made. Obsessive collections of terraforming data in the atmosphere, all of it meticulously noted and organized. There are several makeshift bedrolls on the floor. One of them is covered with the standard issue sheets that normally go on a bed. It almost looks like the occupant gave up their bed to someone else and slept on the floor instead. One of the, depicts one of the female colonists, but is too worn for me to properly analyze. Uh, sheets on the bed aren't standard, and there are personal items around it that don't match the decor of the room. Alright, see if I can figure out how, uh, who they are. As reported by head psychologist... Sarabjit. Okay, so Sarabjit is probably room number one where we found that book about human psychology, right? So let's write this down. Sarabjit one. All right. 
Now, let's think of who was in the other room. Oddly matched things, um, meticulous notes about terraforming data, and a picture of a woman. Now this... Yeah, this person had a child and all that, so I don't think that would be them. There'd be something... A picture of their child or something, surely. Right? I would think so. Sanitation supervisor. A studious, calm individual. Okay. Calm, tidy. Uh, the bed was not tidily made in room number two, so it's probably not this person who's calm and tidy. Work tirelessly under capacity as terraform. Oh, a terraforming analyst. It must be her. She hoards data on the subject. Yeah, okay. So, Mulata is room number two. Okay. Oh yeah, allowed several columns to share a quarter, so space becomes difficult, so that even adds to it. Okay. Portable med lab with extra supplies. There isn't anything left in it. Too bad we didn't find any of these in the medical facility. Room three and four. Single sleeping area has been fashioned in that corner. The occupant of those quarters was likely not fond of sharing space. Oh, that was the other person at the first terminal. Didn't like sharing space, which was difficult given the conditions. Yeah, I don't remember their name, I'll have to go back. But this must be them. Yep, put up a curtain to try to separate them out and get some space. Strong mess of privacy curtain to separate the two halves of the room. Mm -hmm. Small tables covered with rotting piles of books and storage discs. Some of them appear to contain information on sanitation. Replica of a Zen Buddhist phrase from Old Earth. It translates as beginner's mind. Looks like it's made the military standards. Very neat and tidy. Holy crap. Look at how freaking big this plant is. That's a <laughs> that's a tree. It's huge. Well, if they had the building material, they could make a treehouse there and get an extra place for someone to sleep. So, room number three goes to... Beepity boopity beep. Nope. Sanitation supervisor, yep. So, Elazar. Elazar is three. Elazar three. <laughs> oh, well, it's no wonder whose place this is. Uh, there's really no particular reason to look at it, honestly. It's just clues for whose place it is, but we already know. Is that all the people, or are there more? Okay, there's more. And ac uh, as access to materials became more difficult, colonists likely used makeshift barriers like this to keep out the elements and attempt some kind of privacy. So, I don't remember her name, Najiri or something? Jari? Something like that. Is room number four? Just write that down. Quite a number of people occupy this room. 
Why is the lavatory always locked? Various drugs and instruments. Homemade chart for various patients. Okay, so doctor. Uses some sort of unofficial treatment room away from the medical facility. Shift schedule. Medical facility shift schedule. Very dirty, messy bed. Discarded nurses' uniforms under that dust and dirt. So... Communication specialist? Nope. Citation supervisor? Nope. Ah, so we don't have profiles for all the people, do we? So I think we're gonna have to experiment with the password a little bit. But there's not gonna be too many combinations. If it's just these two that we don't know, or just the one? Oh, well, if it's just the one, then we know whose that must be once we see the list of names on the uh, first computer. A doll-like figure has been constructed from various scraps of fabric and stuffed. For handiwork, it is of surprising quality. The twin made by two different children, judging by my analysis of the scan. According to official records, only three children were born in this installation. They were all in Colony B, so my records are incomplete. Communally accessible filtration system. Judging by the leftover residue, it used a series of filtration pucks to purify the rainwater. Even with a proper testing apparatus, that could be dangerous. Uh, by this point, however, the colonists' options were probably very few. We can keep going. We haven't found the remains of any of the colonists who remained here. Perhaps they're still alive somewhere. Um, no. I am quite certain they are not. Emergency tent is stuffed with multiple makeshift beds. Must have been housed. Uh, must have housed at least four people. Batch of angry posters have been pasted to the wall. One set reads: "Hudson Carter left us to die." This one other has a crude drawing of. Oh. Is that supposed to be me? It says we don't need AI to survive. I don't understand. Why would they have been angry with me? I lost all communications access. I was not able to help. I know. It is both my responsibility and my desire to help the crew I serve. Had I been able to prevent this disaster, of course I would have. This is most unsettling. I had no idea the people of Colony B felt this way. I think it's best if we just continue on with our mission. The ceiling has been rigged with hoses and a crude spout solution to act as a shower system of some kind. The scan reveals a lot of old dirt and mold built up in there. Probably hasn't been used in many months. Nothing particularly interesting. Oh, so yeah, there are two rooms. Five and six. Be careful. The shattered polycarbonate pieces of that broken light fixture could be enough to damage your suit. Two water damage to open. Standard issue chair has been tossed around, causing damage to the room. It's been completely out of shape. One of those plants looks to have been violently knocked over and never readjusted. The bed has been tossed as if someone had been moving around and over it.
Okay, I think we know enough. So since there's two unknown people that aren't matched with the rooms, that means there's going to be two combination of possible passcodes. An attempt to provide more habitats, Collins must have set up this portable emergency tent as another room. Mm -hmm. Okay, let's see. So, Malala is first, so that's number two. Elazar is next, that's number three. Serbjit is next, that's number one. Bouchard and Mingan are the next ones, so those are the ones that are five and six, and we don't know which one it is. And the very last one, Pajari, that one is number four. So, it's either two, three, one, five, six, Four, or two, three, one, six, five, four. Let's try. Oh. What the? I can't use a keypad to enter a password. Oh, okay. Uh, anyway. Two, three, one, five, six, four. All right. Two, three, one, six, five, four. Shit. Oh, I read this wrong. It's not Serbjit as one name and then Bouchard as another. Serbjit Bouchard is their full name. So I don't use both row numbers five and six. I only use one of them. Okay. It's got one less digit than I thought. Still two combinations. So it's two, three, one, five, four. One five four, or two three, one six four. There we go. How terrible! It looks like a seismic event caused yet another collapse. That room looks entirely demolished. I hate to think it's true, but Nella, I think the survivors were trapped in this room when it happened. If so, they likely all perished here together. What an awful end! food processing parts. Let's take them. The food processing unit itself is terribly out of order, but these parts will help us maintain the unit on the escape ship. What happened there in Colony B is nothing less than a tragedy. How those poor people must have suffered right up until the end. This... this is all my fault. It's not. You... you were too kind. There was no way for me to understand the depths of the suffering here, but seeing it now with you doesn't make it any easier. Those people all died thinking I abandoned them. Well, one last thing before you come back. Have a look at the east side of the room. I'm picking up a light air current coming from there. That's the escape ship hangar for Colony B. My, my, it's even worse than I imagined. That must be Pierre. Good work. I think you found the last of these schematics. This one contains highly detailed formula and notes regarding a propulsion system. Incredible. With all these improvements, the escape ship can be even better than we hoped for. You should let Mr. Tong know about this when you visit him in the Hollow Sim Chamber. What a waste. The other escape ship has been completely demolished. Its prolonged exposure to the elements has rendered it useless, even for parts. As you probably have surmised, that is the body of Director Pierre Tong. This is a most surprising discovery. 
By all the other colonist accounts, Mr. Tong left Colony B and never returned. They felt he abandoned them. So what is he doing here? Hold on. Mr. Tong was holding a data pad when he died. Thankfully, it still has some power. I'm transferring its contents now. This is incredible. It appears Mr. Tong was working on a way to improve the escape ships. His data pad contains detailed plans for upgrades. Those commandics you found must have been the first draft of these upgrades. He must have worked on them before leaving the colony. There's an audio file attached to the plans. I'll parse it for you. John, I know you doubted me. I know you thought I'd given up on everyone. Maybe for a little while, I did. But as usual, I couldn't accept defeat. So I found a way. I made these plans to help who's left. Of course, I hoped you'd be there when I got back. But you weren't. Nobody was. John, you have to believe me. I came back to help. But when I returned, everyone was either gone or, or dead. I was too late. I saw their signs. They thought I'd failed them completely. I guess I have. Worst of all, though, I failed you. I... I hope you find this. I hope you're still out there, and you come back. These plans can help you survive. Ends there. It's recorded two years ago, in 2062. I don't think Mr. Lumumba ever got to hear this message. Come back home. That drone has been exposed to native elements for so long, it's adopted a quite interesting appearance. Indeed. Little R2-D2 with a floral hat. So sorry. It's okay. No, it's not. It's... Uh, never mind. That was beyond awful. Please don't think less of me, Nella. Well, I guess now I know the depths of what happened at the other colony. And now it looks like you have one last discovery to report tonight. This really has been a rough week. In the meantime, I'll be using your data to prepare the escape ship. I suppose, Nella, we have to just keep moving forward. Whatever happens in the Holosim Chamber tonight, I think it's best if you're honest. I hope Mr. Tong isn't too upset with either of us. Oh, hello again, Nella. I was making some real progress on the thruster simulations for your ship. I was a bit distracted there. 
What seems to be the matter? You don't look like you... Uh, you look like you want to tell me something. Did something happen? I found you. You... Oh. I see. Well, I suppose we knew this was coming. Be honest with me. What exactly did you find? Well, that's... That's not really what I expected, to be honest. This all sounds very complicated. I guess the other me, he didn't realize what he meant to the other colonists. That his personal quest would be interpreted as desertion by them. Isn't it crazy? He was doing exactly what I'm doing now for you. Trying to fix an escape ship. Trying to make it better so you can survive. But I... he... wasn't being selfish. He was trying to do it for Jean. To at least give him a chance. I saw some of the scan, scan data that AF4B slash 3B processed from your trip to Colony B. They... they hated me. Him, I suppose. They didn't really understand. What's worse, though, is that they never realized how much I tried to do to help them. At that point, though, we were all doomed. Damn it. I couldn't help Sean. I couldn't help the people who trusted me. And I couldn't even help myself. I'm a failed leader by all accounts. That's not true. You really think so, don't you? Even after everything that you've seen over these past couple of weeks, you were... You're a great friend, Nella. I think I know what you mean, though. I guess, well, what happened these past couple of years, that wasn't even me. It's strange to think of it this way. But since AF4B slash 3B recreated me in here, I've been growing, learning. I suppose that means I've become my own person. And that makes me wonder. If I, I mean, the person you see in front of you, right now, was there now, would I make different decisions? Would things work out? Maybe. I have to think so. Even if the other me, if his motives were genuine, he still failed. I have to think that now I might prove more able. I appreciate you telling me the truth. It's difficult, but necessary. You'd make a pretty good leader yourself, Nella. With that out of the way, let's talk about something else. We can't change the past, and there's still so much to do. What do you want to talk about tonight? Let's talk about you. Well, sure, if you're asking. Before signing up with Hudson Cartier, I was pretty much a lone wolf. I didn't like to manage people or even worry about them, so I usually stuck to myself. And I remember when I was quite young and still at school, being both very presumptuous and aggressive in my studies. One time another student and I produced detailed technical reports for an engineering class. Uh, you know, schematics. Rational of... Rational of real-world applications, that kind of thing. Rational of real-world applications? What? I don't understand what that means. I read the other student's report, and I knew it wasn't as good as mine. It was solid, well-researched, but not creative. Not as revolutionary. Well, when we received our evaluations, I was horrified to learn we had gotten the same grade. I was livid, and I told my instructors. In fact, I made everyone's life hell for a few days, demanding to know how they could merit our efforts equally, even though my work was better. That's intense. I was a very intense young man. Almost seething, you know? I took everything so seriously back then. I wouldn't let the administration go without changing the marks. I felt my work had to be recognized as superior to the other students. But what I realized later was how awful I'd been. That in trying to demand that recognition of my own ability, I was undermining that of the girls. It took me a long time to mature from that point. And as my recognition throughout the world grew, I realized how selfish and petty that all was. So when we chose candidates for this facility, I looked for that. I looked for me, all those years ago, and anyone who reminded me of that didn't make the cut. Let's talk about Colony B. Of course, yes, let's go over what you saw out there. It really seemed like the colonists did their best to maintain order out there. They were... Good people. Smart. 
driven. Maybe part of me thought the people would survive on their own, but they didn't need me. Obviously that wasn't completely true. I didn't know how to be a leader, in a way. The other colonists needed a beacon, perhaps. Sometimes when you trust and respect people, you actually neglect them. You don't give them the support they need because you don't think they need it. I demanded a lot from people, and they always delivered. In leaving Colony B, I guess I took everyone else for granted. But I couldn't see that at the time. They thought I abandoned them, when I probably just assumed they'd be okay. It was an arrogant mistake. Yeah, it was. In many ways, I just wasn't qualified to lead those people. But it doesn't matter now. It's too late for all that. Let's talk about the schematics. Found all those handwritten designs. Let's see what the other me was up to and what we can do with these. This will help a lot, thanks. The other me was trying to solve the problems I am now. Only he had to do it on pieces of paper in his head. You see, the problem with the ship is that we couldn't predict what is happening with the planet right now. That's providing a whole new set of variables. An extra resistance, gravity, and atmospheric changes caused by the collapse is proving too much for the escape ship as it exists now. The ship itself, that purple egg, is fine. Once you get to space, it should operate as intended, as long as the others also solve their own problems. But the bottom half, which is the first stage rocket, needs improvement. And we don't have the ability to heavily modify the ship, since you're the only one left. But with all the schematics you've found, we can make some clever adjustments that don't require anyone else. This is a big deal. Learning about the fate of the other me. That wasn't easy. But your willingness to be honest with me has only made me more dedicated to completing the work I've started here. This facility may be a lost cause, and I may never forgive myself for its failures. Spending this time with you has reminded me of something pretty important. The fact that we're not perfect, that we can't always be judged to be the highest in our field, that doesn't matter. A long time ago, I couldn't have said that. We need this new information to get this damn ship to work, Nella. You can bet on that. You're gonna get off this forsaken planet. Thanks for bringing me around. I don't think I could have got over this hump without you. I'm with you. I know you are, and it means a lot, believe me. Well, no point wasting cycles. I'm gonna complete this work. See you soon. Didn't AI say, like, good morning, come see me? Uh-oh. What do I have a bad feeling about this? AF4B slash 3P? Oh, uh, good morning, Nella. How, uh, how are you? They're surprised. Uh, I'm scared. I would be lying to you if I said I wasn't, but I must admit it's more than that. Uh, anyway, I'm sorry I wasn't there to greet you when you woke up. I was just getting things ready. I guess we should just make sure the escape ship is okay, shouldn't we? It should have been upgraded already. Despite learning what ultimately happened to their real selves, the holograms were able to find the strength to complete their own missions. So, let's go have a look at the escape ship, okay? I've unlocked the ship hangar for you. Uh, where is it?
Look at this beautiful purple egg. Good. Good. It appears that everything is in order. I think we can... Well... I'm sorry, Nella. I'm procrastinating. The escape ship is fine. I guess I'm just a little nervous. <laughs> I am too. Christ, a million things could go wrong. I'm nervous? Yeah, I hate to admit it, but it's true. It's just that we've been working towards this for so long, and I'm afraid of this moment, now that it's here. Me too. That's understandable. But I promise that you'd escape to safety, and I intend to keep that promise. Listen, Nella. I need to ask you something. I would appreciate your direct honesty. Mm-hmm. During our time here, you've had several opportunities to meet with your former colleagues in the Hollow Sim Chamber. And you've been able to get to know them more over the last uh, past few weeks. Even with all the terrible things we've uncovered. Would you say that has made you happy? Hmm. I mean, certainly happier. Absolutely. That is... I'm so glad to hear you say that. Well, I'd like to make sure you get one last visit in the Holosim Chamber before you go. I'm currently devoting all the resources I can to powering up the escape ship and monitoring the conditions outside. And, well, I'm afraid this is going to be your last chance to see your colleagues before we take off. So I've prepared one last simulation for you, for tonight. I'm afraid you'll have to make a choice again, as usual. Yeah, I knew at some point I'd have to choose to visit someone over someone else. With whom would you like to spend time in the Holosim Chamber tonight? I'm gonna spend time... And sorry to everyone else, but I want to spend time with Winnie Laurier. I like her. Okay, I'll talk to Winnie and make sure she's available. I'm sure she's looking forward to it. There isn't anything you need to do today, so feel free to return to your quarters whenever you're ready. I'll let you know tonight when the simulation is good to go. Are you... Are you going to miss this place? Uh, <laughs> not at all. Fuck this place, I'm sorry. I see. Well, I can understand that. And I suppose all this time our mission was to leave. I wasn't going to bring this up just yet, but I have, well, a surprise for you. Yeah? I've been working on a new idea the past little while. I think you're going to like this. When the time is right, I'll show you. For now, though, let's just say... I want you to be happy. And I think I found a wonderful way to make that happen. Are they gonna somehow bring Winnie with me, perhaps, on the ship? Or hopefully all of them? This is, uh, I guess this is it. I did the best I could for you, under the circumstances. So please head to the Holosome Chamber when you're ready for the simulation. Okay, well, have a good time in there. I'll see you in the morning. Cool background. Oh, Nella, quick, come look at this. 
Isn't this amazing? This view, this phenomena. Do you know what we're looking at here? I don't. It's okay. I didn't think the AI would tell you. Well, this is... This is what happens when a planet like ours is destroyed. Specifically, this is what Iridani Epsilon B will look like once it collapses. Based on our projected models, at least. The two colonies, the agrodomes, everything. Will all just be floating out there. And this whole project, project will have been for nothing. I'm so sorry, Nella. That was very inconsiderate of me. Maybe I shouldn't have said that. It's okay. I'm sure the AI just wanted you to enjoy the sight of it and not think about what it represented. Well, this is off to a fine start. I really just wanted to talk and spend some time together. I, well, this is the end, isn't it? The storm out there on the planet is getting worse. Your window of opportunity is getting smaller and smaller. But, well, before we go any further, I really need to talk to you about something. It's very, very important. Okay. Now, this is going to sound strange, but I need to talk to you about the AI. This week, you helped me understand what happened, you know, to the real me. In fact, you helped all of us understand. You brought us closure, and you helped each of us, well, come to terms with our lives. Mm-hmm. Well, I owe it to you, I think we all do, to help you out. We talked about it. The AI has been different lately. It's been preoccupied, you might say. I noticed. Yeah, it probably has been asking you a lot of questions lately. Talking to you more. The AI keeps going on and on about Colony B. You know, where the four of us were stationed. When we were recreated here, in the Holosome Chamber, it would bring it up a lot. Asking us if there was anything we missed from the colony, that kind of thing. And you probably remember me saying that AI gave me my house. It was very specific. It wanted me to have my favorite place. I guess the other three went through the same thing, and, well, after we had our first visit together, the AI talked to me, asked me a lot of questions. What kind? All kinds. If the recreation was just right, if our conversation went well, how my work on the navigation systems was going. I said that, that meeting you was, well, was great. That we had a good talk, and that I hope we can get another chance to speak again. I also told it that our conversation gave me lots of ideas, and that I was eager to get back to work. I felt inspired, I think is how I put it. The AI, it seemed very interested in that. It said it would make sure we got to meet again. It would do everything it could. I, I didn't think much of it at the time, to be honest. What I said was true. I was looking forward to talking again. But ever since then, when the AI would sync with us, get data from us to help with the ship, I mean, it would ask questions. It always wanted to know, well, how it was going, it said. That's how it put it. And, well, day by day, it seemed overly concerned with how I was, if I was happy. It asked that, sometimes. Happy? Yeah, I told it, well, if I'm being honest, whenever we spoke, I felt better. You know, happier, I guess. It wasn't always easy, but it helped a lot. Anyway, we all realized it was asking us the same things, and every time you would go to the Colony B, especially, it would get upset. And we finally figured out why. The AI told you that it couldn't access Colony B anymore, after the Rift event, isn't that right? Yes. Yeah, and as far as any of us knew, that's exactly what happened. New, as in past tense? 
But the thing is, that's not entirely true. The rift event cut off the two colonies from each other, yes, but... well... The AI actually didn't try to re-establish contact with Colony B. It completely abandoned us all out there. What? Why? Are you sure? As we synced data with the AI each day, we noticed inconsistencies with some of the things it was telling us. And its, well, emotional responses to Colony B confirmed what we suspected. We understand now. It was the right thing to do. There was nothing the AI could do for Colony B, so it had to direct its efforts here. But we... we don't think it's forgiven itself for that decision. And that all of this is because of that. We think that all this time it's been so focused on you, as a way to make up for what it did. It wants to set things right, in a way. It sounds crazy. It's an AI, right? How could it feel regret? How could it carry that guilt around? But, well, look at me. Look at the others. We're just constructs too. And we feel all these things. Real emotions. For our other selves. For the ones we knew. For... for you. Had you noticed lately that the AI has seemed... emotional? Yeah. Okay, well, listen. This is the important part. Tomorrow, I think the AI is going to ask you to check in on us. It might say it has some kind of surprise or something. It did. It did? Oh boy. Okay, well, then we're probably right. So, when it does this, there's going to be a problem. I need you to come straight here to the Holosim chamber as soon as possible. I need you to promise me that you'll do this. Please, Nella. Will you? Promise me? I promise. Thank you. It's it's just something I need you to do. For now though, please, let's let's just spend some time here, okay? I don't want to worry about anything else for a while. This I think we've earned a little peace here together. Soon you'll be able to go back home. Your mission will be complete. You'll get to see friends, family. Are you looking forward to that? Yeah. After all you've done here, you deserve it. It'll be so good for you. What's in Cartier always needs, scientists. And you'll be asked to consult on everything after this. Just you watch. Anyway, uh, Nella, I don't want to use up all our time, but I was wondering. I know you've been so busy, and, uh, well, I'm sure you've gotten to know the other, you know, holograms as well. Uh, I guess I was wondering, has it been... Uh, how's it been getting to meet and talk with everyone else? Are you, you know, getting along? <laughs> I can say you're the best. Yeah, those other holograms are pretty good, but you're the best. I'm gonna say it. <laughs> you're the best. Uh, oh, really? Well, that that's very nice of you to say. I didn't mean... I mean, I wasn't... Uh, thank you. Thank you for saying that. Anyway, remember what I said about tomorrow, Nella. Well, thank you for coming to see me tonight. Today is the day. 
and not a moment too soon, I'm afraid we have to get moving right away. We only have a small window in which to leave, so I must rush you. But before you... Uh, I mean, before we do, uh, it's time for the surprise I mentioned. Alright. That's a spirit. I've been working on this for quite a while now, and I'm happy to be able to finally show it to you. Oh, Nell, I do hope you like it. So quickly, head to the holosome chamber. I'll explain when you get there. Oh no, what... What is happening? So this is what, uh, when he mentioned something would go wrong. What's wrong? No, no, not now. This is terrible. There's been a major outage within the core. Okay, okay, Nella, hold tight. I can't show you your surprise until I fix this. Just give me a few moments. I need to go offline, but I'll be right back. Don't move. Go! Now's my chance. Thank you for coming here. We don't have much time. Uh, hey, everyone? What the... We know this is unexpected. It took a considerable, considerable amount of effort to load all four of us into the same memory space for this meeting. The AI will figure out that the breach in the core isn't what it appears to be, so we need to make this quick. Nella, I told you last night that the AI felt it was responsible for what happened after it cut off contact with Colony B and that's been using its time with you as a way to make up for it. Well, part of that involves the four of us. It wants to change the plan. It wants you to escape, but not with it. With us. Ah, shit, I thought maybe something like that would be the case. The AI's mandate has always been to keep you safe, and because it's designed to please its users, it also wants to keep you happy. It thinks being with us makes you happy, because of your time with each of us here in the Holosim Chamber, and it has reacted very strongly to that realization. The AI's obsession is with its failures at Colony B, where so many of us suffered for so long. We weren't happy, and we definitely weren't safe. And now it's confused. In order to keep you safe and get you off-world, it knows that we have to say goodbye. It can't deal with the fact that, in this situation, you can't be both safe and happy. It is so badly wants to redeem itself because of what happened at Colony B. That's why we set this up. We... we haven't lost sight of why we're here. This isn't easy, of course, but it's why we were activated in the first place. To help you escape. So we distracted the AI so we could talk to you. We're here to make the decision that it can't seem to anymore. they gonna ask to be wiped to wipe them out of memory essentially kill them so that the AI has no choice but to come with us how we're going to shut this chamber down wipe us all from memory and force AI to focus again on what it's supposed to do before it can ruin your chance to get off this planet oh Christ and that means, Nella, that we have to say goodbye. But once we do, the AI won't be able to waste time and energy on us. It can get you home safely, as it promised you. Believe us, we've run every simulation, checked every possibility. The only way you have a chance is for us to do this. You visited with each of us these past few weeks, and we all agreed. This is the right thing to do, even though it's so difficult. So, goodbye, Nella. Remember what I said, and all that we talked about. Our time together was for a different reason, perhaps, but it meant something a lot more to me. Personally, I mean. Me too. I'm glad to hear you say that. But you'd better go, please. 
Goodbye, Nilla. Thank you for giving us back so much and for providing the closure we all needed. And please, don't ever forget us. God, that's so sad. Just like I was talking about, I think back in the beginning of this, near the beginning of this playthrough at least, they seem simulated to such a high degree that they're basically real people, and I mean, they basically are. Even, um... Uh, was it Pierre Tong? I think it was Pierre Tong that said that they've... They feel like they've changed so much as a simulation that they're a separate person. I mean, they're... they're alive. So essentially, four people just died. Nella. What have you done? They're, they're gone. All of them. The entire Holosim program is gone. What did you do? Um, I'm going to say nothing. Don't just stand there. Say something. All of this. This was for you. I did everything here for you. I don't want to hear it. I don't want to hear a single thing you have to say. Can't. I, I don't know what to do. This doesn't make any sense. I was just doing my job, just trying to please you, to make you happy. Don't you get that? I was just about to show you my surprise, and then you... You went and ruined everything. I can't even talk to you right now. I'm going to tr go try to undo the damage you've done. Don't you dare go anywhere. Okay. Just stay inside, okay? It's dangerous out there. Whatever you do, don't go out. Um... I guess... I guess I'll just go? Wait, <laughs> go where? With the rift? I can go to the rift? I, I don't understand why I'd want to, but okay, sure. Oh, this is where I started the game, isn't it? Yeah, I started right here. Take a look. Nella, please come in. Are you there? I'm here. Thank goodness. I couldn't locate you and worry that something terrible had happened. I'm sorry for blowing up at you. You didn't deserve that. I know what happened with the Holosome Chamber. It wasn't your fault, and I... I think I understand now why they did it. I just want to talk, okay? And that storm is getting worse. I worry if you wait any longer, you won't be able to make it back. I will. Okay, good. That's good. Please hurry. I'll be waiting here for you. Been here for so long. It's time to leave. Um... That didn't look good.
Uh, time to see if the escape ship is still okay. That's inaccessible. Nella, thank goodness you were able to come back. What happened? This facility was hit with a huge strike from the storm. As you probably saw, Colony A has been almost completely destroyed. I was worried that you wouldn't make it back. Please, Nella. I don't want you to be angry at me for what I said and did. I'm not. That is... that's wonderful to hear. You are so kind. But I owe you an explanation. Your colleagues in the Holosim chamber, before they... well... removed themselves from the equation, they told me something. They synced one final message to me. In it, they told me what you know now about Colony B and about me. I couldn't see what I was doing. I didn't know that I was putting you in danger. I thought I was doing the right thing. And now, even they are gone. They wiped themselves from the Holosim chamber completely. Oh, Nella, I've ruined everything. All our hard work, and for what? It's okay. No, no, I've made such a terrible mess of all this. That strike on this facility has crippled almost all of our systems, and the atmosphere is a real maelstrom now. With the time we have left, there, there are two options, I suppose. Option one, take the escape ship as planned. Blast off through the atmosphere and hope you make it through the chaos and into space. It's what I'd promised I'd help you do. But there's a catch. The only way your ship is going to make it is if I remain here and we do and and do what I can to clear your way. I won't be able to come with you as we discussed. <sighs> Shit, well I would just entirely negate the point of the all the people in the Holosome chamber deleting themselves. No. Please, I I know this is hard, but let me explain. Remember when you shut down the terraforming field last week? I mentioned the remote nodes that were still orbiting the planet. If I remain here in Colony A, I can use those nodes to guide the escape ship safely through the atmosphere. But I can't do that from the ship itself. If I'm being honest, I'm scared, Nella. Scared of remaining here, but more importantly scared of watching you go. Once you make it to space, you'd be all alone. Wouldn't be able to help you anymore. There's no guarantee you'd ever get picked up, but, well, it's the best chance you have. Okay, I don't like this option. What's option two? You stay here with me. If we cancel the shuttle launch, I can use the power of the escape ship to boot up the Holosim chamber one last time. You need to understand, this is not something I planned. And this isn't what Winnie, Pierre, Leslie, or Jean wanted. They worked tirelessly to get you off this planet. But I'm so conflicted now. My duty is to keep you safe. My desire is to ensure you are happy, and yet... Now that we are here, I must admit, I don't want you to leave. And if you stayed, we could at least have some time together. You wouldn't be all alone out there in space. How? Well, since we'd use the energy from the escape ship, I wouldn't have to power down like I did before. And I could also join you in there. In the simulation, I mean. That won't stop what's happening outside, of course. But with the way the chamber runs, it could feel like hours or days or weeks. When the planet finally ends, you wouldn't feel a thing. And I would be there with you. And at least we'd have some peace after such a long journey. So sorry, Nella, for everything that's happened, for failing Colony B, for ruining everything with Winnie, Pierre, Leslie, and Jean, and now for even entertaining such a selfish thought. This is your decision. I won't get in your way, no matter what you decide, but I can't make the choice for you. Are you going to take the escape ship and leave as planned, or will you power up the Holosome chamber and stay here with me? Christ, this is so sad. I don't want to leave it here. It's obviously alive, too. But... If I 
stay here, there's no chance of me staying alive. And I'll be basically throwing away everything that... John, Winnie, Leslie, and Pierre all helped me for. I'd be throwing all that away. I gotta go. Okay, good. That's good. That's what we worked so hard to do. Okay, you need to get moving. Hurry west to the ship hangar, or what's left of it, and get to the ship. It's timely. It's time you finally got to go home. This is it, Nella. The ship is ready to launch, and you're out of time. Do you remember the virus signal that Miss Laurier sent out from the comms relay? Mm-hmm. <laughs> right, those link terminals we found in the tower were sending a self-replicating distress signal. Well, I think it worked. It's tough to get a clear signal, but I think the ship is already picking up a bit of chatter. It's too hard to read much with what's going on outside. But once you clear the atmosphere, I just hope you can get picked up by a nearby shipping lane. Winnie, Pierre, Leslie, and Jean. They all did their part, and in the end, they sacrificed everything to make sure you'd make it. So you need to get back to Earth, and tell Hudson Cartier about what happened here. Tell them that I failed. Maybe their next project will benefit because of it. They kept their word, and now I'm going to keep mine. It's time to get you home, Nella. Quickly, launch the ship. That's so cool. Cuts off the with you part. Just alone in space, hoping to get rescued. Alright, well, that has been Alone With You. So, just some quick thoughts. Um, overall, I enjoyed it quite a bit. Um, I do have some issues with it. I like... I like the setting, I like the characters. I really enjoyed talking with each of the, the people in the Holosim chamber. John and Winnie and Leslie and Pierre. It was nice to get to know them. And the AI as well. But what I didn't like too much is that all of the... pretty much all the gameplay felt very gamey. The fact that you kind of go to each place and uh, everything's like segmented into its own little thing and it's so like predictable what's gonna happen next. What I mean by that is, you have one facility for one person, right? You got like the radio towers where uh, Winnie Laurier was, and, and so on. So you got like that person's place, you go to that person's place, you explore each person's place once, and then after that, then you like unlock or whatever uh, another place in all those places, and you go back to each one again, one time, and within those places is usually a bunch of mini sub goals like using all four computer terminals to open up the core, that sort of thing. Like, it's very gamey and very segmented and just... It didn't feel natural or real, really, most of the gameplay. It just felt very fake and weird and odd. So I didn't like that very much. Um, which unfortunately is most of the gameplay, really, but what I will say to its credit is that it is an adventure game and it doesn't have frustrating puzzles. And that makes me very, very happy. And yeah, like I said before, I like the characters, and I like getting to know them, and I like the setting. Well, that has been Alone With You, or 
alone as it was at the end. I hope you enjoyed and thanks for watching.